Good evening. Welcome to this online lecture during which uh, we will explore the cultural uh, poster in Europe. I'm George Tilianou and I'm your host uh, for this evening. Our guest speaker is graphic designer Ovidiu Hrin. He joins us uh, live from uh, Timisoara, Romania. Good evening, Ovidiu. Good evening, George. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. Just two words on the format before we start. We will kick off with a brief introductory speech uh, from Periklis Christodoulou, curator at the House of uh, European History. And then Mr. Hrin will speak for about 35 to 40 uh, minutes. He will introduce the subject and then a question and answer will uh, follow. Uh, please leave any questions or comments you might have in the comment section and we will pick them up uh, during uh, the Q&A. Periklis, the floor is yours. Uh, oh, but please, you will mute. Ah, there you go. Okay, because it was a bit. Uh, you were muted. So, sorry. I, am I okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good evening, and welcome to the second online lecture of the series Europe on Posters. It complements our current temporary exhibition When Walls Talk, which tells the diverse and engaging story of posters in European history. Our exhibition tries to reveal the mechanisms of the constant struggle for power and influence in the public sphere. Through the pairing of conflicting posters and the present presentation of significant trends and examples, we show the communicative power of this medium. In this frame, the cultural posters function as agents of connection. The posters we understand it today, illustrated and colorful, did not exist before the middle of the 19th century. Starting in the major cultural metropolises and gradually moving to other cities, posters placed next to each other on walls or in specially designated places have shaped the urban landscape and since the end of the 19th century. However, playbills and posters for theatrical performances existed before that time and they are in fact among the earliest in the history of posters. Their aim was to inform the public and therefore advertise. These trades continue until now. Cultural posters seek to bring people together, inspire them and offer them new perspectives. In the exhibition, posters in different styles from various cultural events reflect both the diversity of European culture and its political dimensions. Our speaker today, Ovidio Hrin, will address the subject, the cultural poster in Europe, a historical assessment. Ovidio is a graphic designer, calligrapher and art director who won numerous international design awards. He is the creator of numerous posters and presents himself as a communication architect. Indeed, communication is the key word to understand cultural posters. With Ovidio, we have the rare chance to follow the process that leads to the creation of posters and listen to the point of view of a professional, a specialist in his field. Posters are ephemeral, produced for a specific moment and reflect their contemporary cultural and social movements. I'm delighted that Ovidio is with us today and I'm looking forward to discover with him what lies behind the posters facade. I hope that you will enjoy his lecture. Thank you, Ovidio. Thank you very much, Pericles. And thank you for having me here. Uh, so good evening, everybody. And uh, again, my name is uh, Ovidio Prin, and I'm a graphic designer. I come from a city that throughout uh, its history has always been on the fringe of the big empires. Um, you can easily say that I live and work in a marginal centric city where I do everything that I can to make a living as a graphic designer in the city of Timisoara, or how some have come to call it, the Babel of the Pusta. Timisoara. Bulgarian Temeshvar in German Temeshborg um, was always a city tolerant toward, towards its many cultures. I think 
that it is because of this historical fact that somehow I grew so curious towards the topic that I'm going to present to you today with the kind grace of our organizers, the House of European History. Um, my, actually my intent for today is to leave you after this presentation, actually with more questions about the wonderful, this wonderful medium, um, than, than answers. Uh, we can find answers in, in any, in any source now, we live in a such hyper informed uh, society now that uh, answers can be found anywhere, but uh, questions are, com are a rare commodity, uh, especially the right ones. Um, I sure hope that I would succeed in this matter in um, leaving you with, um, um, uh, with a couple of questions, or hopefully one good question. My presentation will have three, uh, let's say, three chapters for today. Uh, I will uh, introduce you to um, the various styles and uh, a quick preview of the timeline of the, of the historical timeline of the poster. Um, second, I will present you how the poster can be shaped by culture. And third, how, and this will be the section with the most questions, will be how the poster can shape culture itself. Um, well, the poster is, is, um, is a medium that started, I don't know, its, um, its journey. Uh, of over 100 years ago, um, when, like uh, Pericles said, right, the first, the first, um, uh, the first posters, the first um, um, advertisements were on uh, leaflets, were on uh, playbills, right? Uh, they um, they messed basically uh, cities all around Europe uh, till. Uh, um, Till uh, regulation came came into place, and this is why I'm I, I want to begin this this presentation with these um, with these cylinders with these columns. Uh, for instance, uh, the Maurice column in Paris, the Litfaßsäule in Berlin, and all the other uh, the other cities throughout Europe, in like Wien, Budapest, and Timisoara, even had these types of columns. Promoting their um, their local events, basically, um, they were like thermometers, if you want, who actually gave you the pulse of uh, of a city. Now, something comes to mind now, which uh, is is a very interesting interesting phenomenon. I heard it for the first time while I was studying architecture, and I I think that um, uh, this concept. Uh, is very um, is very good to describe what these columns and uh, uh, this organized method methods of posting the poster uh, throughout the city uh, felt like. The concept is the genus logic concept. It's basically a, a very old concept of uh, which means not more than the spirit of the place and. Um, yeah, the poster was nothing less than that. It actually, wherever you, you were uh, at some point and wherever you are actually right now, uh, when seeing a wall full of posters or a Litfaßsäule or a Maurice column right now uh, all over Europe, you can basically feel this pulse and this, um, this actual spirit of the place. Um, and not only by the information they, they have, um, they give you, the posters give you, but by how that information is being communicated to you. And um, this is a nice differentiator that we have throughout the cities, and I will come back to this, uh, to this, this point later on. Um, but as I, as, I, as I told you before, 
I am first and foremost a practicing graphic designer and um, very passionate about the poster as a medium. I am not a historian, uh, neither am, am I an academic. Therefore, um, this lecture is not going to have a linear approach on the history of the cultural poster in Europe but it will rather offer a series of inquiries into the culture of poster, um, as well as the poster as a builder of culture. Um, as, a, well, as a pretty curious practitioner of the craft of poster making myself, it was always a question that, well, not actually always, but it was a, it was a question that intrigued me early on in my career of graphic, graphic design. And that question was, was this, once I um, came to find out more and more about the poster, uh, I asked myself, how could the poster gain so much power in the course of the past 100 years? while transforming itself from a medium of informing about culture to a medium of shaping culture. Well, we can see that throughout the history of the poster, there were multiple styles, types, doctrines, trends, and ways of um, persuading viewers and actually influence behaviors. And for that matter, the When Wolves Talk exhibition does a fantastic job of presenting the power of the poster throughout the years and their various forms of voicing out whatever message they were meant to address. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the various voices and periods I've mentioned before, I'm going to give you a quick historical preview of some of them, uh, just to catch up with how the poster grew into this ubiquitous medium that it is today. And I will start with um, as early as the Victorian age, uh, which happened somewhere around the 1880s to the 1920s. Um, there was a style that um, well, was very rich, uh, decorative, uh, highly ornate, has this complex and elaborate type, uh, this curved and uh, waved type, banner type of, uh, of graphics. Um, also, most of them back then were, um, were produced um, by offset li uh, litho, uh, lithography, which was the the preferred medium of printing for that uh, for that era. After that, we have uh, well, actually in tandem, we have also the arts and crafts styles, which we can see here that it's more it presents somehow more traditional or old, older style features, um, heavier textures, illustrated typography. Um, we have also in tandem the Art Nouveau. We can see here um, posters of Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, Steinlein, uh, Mucha, or even the Romanian Abka Balthazar, who um, were very um, proactive in uh, designing in this uh, in their own their own way of this Art Nouveau style, which we can recognize by the, this, those linear based drawings, the natural forms and shapes, the hand drawn typefaces, and, and basically the earth tones um, that were used for the color palette. Um, in the early twentieth century, we well the avant garde's. Um, hit the columns where they were a pretty eclectic style, uh, getting a much more, um, what can I say, um, direct 
style with very cubist uh, influences they wiped out basically all the traditional features that um, the other styles before them before it uh, used or were using Here we have the early modernist approach of uh, the Bauhaus, who also broke from tradition to create a new style of design. Yeah. Actually, changed the way this this style actually changed the way the public saw the design, uh, saw the design and art. It actually created a new set of eyes. A new, new school of vision, if you want, for how to read um, the poster, how to read the information, how to read design. Uh, form follows function was uh, a beloved uh, quote uh, from that era. As, as you can see, they're all geometrically based, uh, cleaner type, more photo, uh, uh, less illustrations, more photographic. Here we have the Art Deco with, um, for instance, um, frontline uh, front masters like uh, Cassandre uh, or Sigismund Maud. Um, this, for instance, this, this style appeared after the to the First World War, um, let's say somewhere around the 20s and 30s. Uh, it presented itself as a bold, positive, highly industrial, um, uh, futuristic feel to it, very dominant, uh, sharp, aerodynamic. It, it promoted uh, the perfection of, of forms, used high contrast in, uh, in, their, in their posters. Um, and usually had this flat, flatter feel uh, to it, which made them uh, resonate so much, uh, so much stronger as the other stylistic counterparts from, uh, from their time. Of course, the socialist real realism. You can see here a few, some propaganda posters from basically from everywhere. And every culture had them. And um, here, uh, in these types of posters, the humans were presented as ideal type, as the ideal type, the ideal heroes. This is this is basically an ideological, heavy ideological um, uh, posters, which I'm not going going to get into it. But it's it's very very interesting as a form of communication and how it. Uh, how strong it um, uh, actually its strength it's very interesting uh, how it was used to um, move actually the masses um, in parallel for instance is it it's another style that uh, uh, this one went uh, somewhere starting from the 40s uh, on. Uh, style that has influenced heavy uh, graphic design as we know it today. Uh, it, it was the Swiss style that actually brought the first set of uh, hugely important rules of uh, perception and of um, of uh, of um, a poster's readability uh, that came out as a simple, highly legible, hugely immensely object objective um, uh, poster art. Um, grids were used, symmetries, uh, asymmetries. The use of negative space is a school in itself. Uh, 
they were actually very highly um, um, highly elaborated uh, reductive um, uh, information pieces. The Swiss style went uh, uh, as a school uh, for many, many years, and uh, we can uh, we will see it uh, further on in this presentation as well. And in the 60s, the late 70s, well, the mid 70s, we had the psychedelic style, which, um, which actually presented itself as the first, uh, uh, first representation of the pop culture, 60s pop culture. Uh, we had these abstract swirls, uh, the curvilinear calligraphy, uh, these intense optical vibrations vibrations, this strong, strong um, um, contrast. Here, I want to give you a quick look on the postmodern, uh, the postmodern poster, uh, which is the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, we have here, um, uh, Three poster masters uh, from that uh, from that year uh, from that era. We have Michel Bouvet on the left, uh, uh, Paul Asher in the middle, and Neville Brody on the right side. Uh, collage, overlapping elements, and the um, predominant impulsive and playful attitude of these posters actually define in a in a very in very broad lines uh, how the postmodern um, uh, poster came to be of course what i'm doing here is not a, a very a highly accurate historical approach on the poster you can read a lot more on that um, individually what i want to give you is a feel on how the poster grew as a communications medium of course, and how um, it changed with culture till it changed culture itself. And moving on to the early 90s and, well, mid 90s and uh, early 2000s with the grunge style, where we here have two uh, predominant figures. It's David Carson on the left and uh, Another um, master is the British Vaughan Oliver of this style, where we have a, another response again uh, to uh, very uh, to the sedimented, already sedimented postmodern look. And we have these dirty, dirty textures, the background, the irregular lines, handwritten elements. Um, uh, the, the basically were no grids uh, at all. Uh, it was a direct response on the on the trends of the time. As last um, these last three images and posters that I that I'm that I'm looking uh, the ones the one on the left and in the middle uh, are the are the designs of um, the Designers Republic, who, who actually uh, invented a, a style of themselves uh, of how to on how to communicate. This is why I kind of take the courage to call it the post pop poster because it was so highly influential in a time when nobody actually thought that uh, the poster style can reinvent itself or uh, one can invent another uh, another voice for the poster and uh, well these posters came uh, came into place back then and of course there's the flat style uh, which in itself is uh, is a very very broad subject and and just uh, just to give you a stylistic 
approach on how it uh, how it looked. We have this Giro d'Italia um, poster on the right, uh, presenting the highly the highly minimalistic approach, uh, the neutral tones, the straight lines, the use of negative space, um, very very reductive style of uh, of a poster. Okay, this um, this is all very nice, and of course there are way more styles and substyles and highly interesting facts to talk about the poster as a cultural phenomenon. But still, these posters you just saw here are just mere images on a computer screen, right? They're stripped down from their most valuable characteristic, mainly the context. And this brings me to the next chapter of, uh, uh, of my presentation. Um, the context of where and when, and not lastly why, these posters appeared in that particular way and not differently. What made that poster be that particular poster? How did it receive its voice that we now, after years, tens of years, see it so clearly? Uh, the poster is, and I just, I'm, just, I'm just making a, a bracket, a parenthesis here. And the poster is a product shaped by a designer, right, with the utmost intention until it reaches, it reaches its final uh, its final form. As well, the intent to clearly communicate the message in a right way and to be understood or not by an audience as quick as possible is one of the most important prerequisites that a poster must fulfill. These things happen all the time while designing a poster. They are in uh, in the mind, in the back, in the in the backside of each poster creator. But still, we're talking about context, right? And for that matter, I wanted I wanted to talk on this subject around um, around the concrete around the concrete example and i from the plethora of all the poster f posters ever designed i took one out and i took not well, i took a movie poster out of all movie posters that were designed and we are going to use it to see how this movie poster was interpreted by the different culture where this particular movie was promoted throughout the world. We're talking here about the Planet of the Apes poster between the years 1968 and 1970. Um, it might not, not look much, but this is the original poster for the um, Planet of the Apes for the first Planet of the Apes movie in 19 designed in 1968. We all know the uh, we all know the uh, the movie. Here, uh, the first the first slide. I want to show you the first. Um, the first variations, if you want, uh, of promoting this poster by two um, really uh, monsters, right, of, uh, of poster design, Enzo Nistri and Fernando Alberizio. Yeah, Enzo Nistri uh, from Italy, Fernando Alberizio from, uh, from Spain. Um, they, they present their own style, for instance, the, um, uh, 
the so the so uh, class the so classic um, painterly painterly uh, uh, style the 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 poster painter style of the Italian of the Italian poster and the real uh, powerful indif highly individual style of the of the of Fernando Albericio uh, in Spain. Further on, we have three more posters designed um, in the same period in France on the left by uh, uh, Jean Maschi. Uh, in Belgium, unknown, and Germany, unknown. From this page only, we can see uh, su such a high difference between uh, uh, between between the German poster, which has has this Zachplakat feeling to it, this this um, modern inherited. Zachplakat style, uh, and in France and Belgium, as this painterly feel, which was but was was a huge trend, uh, European trend by uh, by the way back then, but still different in representation, composition, and um, and focus of on on the imagery or on the or on the. Um, or on the ty typography. Video, I, I don't want to interrupt, simply just to point out, because sometimes these uh, online lectures feel a little bit lonely because uh, the medium is such. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to let you know that we're being followed and actually on this particular um, point of your, of your lecture, we have a comment from uh, Richard, I hope I pronounced the last name correctly, uh, Bless. Uh, uh -huh. saying, uh, the alternate version of movie posters is always very interesting to observe. So people are following us. Don't feel lonely. That's all I wanted to say. And I'm <laughs> okay. still around with you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, good. And I will, I will, I will stop here. Um, to say to, to repeat again, um, that we have, we have been looking and we're looking now at. Uh, interpretation of countries like Italy, Spain, France, Belgium, and Germany. I will I will take I will take a bit uh, a step back right now, and because I told I, I spoke about this this uh, highly picturesque uh, style of the drawing and designing and thinking on the movie poster of that particular time. I cannot stay uh, aside and not and not and not show you uh, a glimpse into Jean Maschi's work, which uh, who was a master in um, in designing in designing posters. And on the left hand side, the, the five posters, he, he actually was the main designer uh, of the Jean Paul Belmondo uh, movies, the Jean Paul Belmondo flicks for over fifteen or twenty years. Um, as you can see, uh, on the five posters uh, on the left, um, he had a particular way uh, of representing, um, of, of actually working with image, text, with creating impact or the necessary impact for that particular culture. And to actually uh, build upon it, yeah, movie after movie after movie, and so on. And now uh, much more. And I'm using, of course, I used you now, and I used this example to make a f to, to actually to create uh, a break. Because right now, what we have on the right hand side, we have. The not so very popular voice of of Central Europe, of the um, of the Czech poster, 
the Romanian poster, the Polish poster. And what I did here, and I wanted to have on this, uh, on this, on this particular slide is actually how basically the same movies were presented and were uh, promoted in what now has come to be called Eastern Europe, right? Um, and what we have here is um, the first two posters uh, on the right, the, uh, the, the poster up um, are uh, from, from, the, uh, from Czechoslovakia. Uh, they are designed both by Karel, Karel Vaka, and the poster underneath, the posters underneath are uh, posters designed in Romania by uh, unknown, uh, by unknown um, um, uh, designer. Actually, I'm sorry, uh, the Romanian poster is only the blue one, the man from Rio. I'm sorry. And um, the, the really psychedelic one is a Polish poster. What is very interesting here is, is to see how in the same year, basically, the different types of culture communicated this type of poster. This, this is, uh, for me, as a graphic designer, this is, this is a highly interesting, interesting thing. And this speaks a lot about, um, about the place and about the locus where, um, um, what these posters promoted um, that particular information. Now, uh, as we are still in Eastern Europe, I want to go back to our main story, the planet of the apes, right? And see how the planet of the apes was promoted in, uh, in Eastern European countries. And we have here on this screen, we have three, um, um, three versions. We have the first one on the left, Bratislav Hlavati from, from uh, Czechoslovakia, Molnar uh, Kaiman uh, from Hungary, and Erik Lipinski from Poland. It doesn't take one much to see how varied and how different and how totally out of any context each and every one of these posters are. But still, they communicate the message that um, the poster um, needed, right, to attract. The audience to see, to create enough, I don't know uh, how you say it in English, to create enough buzz so that it attracts you, uh, intrigues you to go to go and see the movie. And not so organized and not so well, um, uh, a well established um, type of communication as these far more advanced uh, cultures or liberal cultures were promoting their own movies. Ovidio, if yes. I may, if I may ask, uh, just watching at these now, this Czechoslovakian one, mm -hmm. is there, you think there is any Che Guevara kind of well, uh, influence uh, there? Because uh, like, uh, you know, when you look at it, well, it 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 is it definitely bring to mind that famous image. Huh? <laughs> it is it is definitely well Che Guevara maybe not Che Guevara, but it definitely is um, a, a highly a highly pop psychedelic uh, psychedelic version of um, of the Planet of the Apes poster. Uh, che Guevara maybe may, maybe is um, maybe happened too uh, too close and. Uh, Although it was already a, a pop, a pop symbol, a high pop symbol, um, I don't know if you um, 
uh, if it was necessarily used here. The style, the, the, the flat shaded style of, uh, of representation that is used here and is used throughout pop culture as well, was, uh, was used in various, uh, in various types of communications and in various types of, uh, of posters. So I'm not, I'm not sure here, but it's a really interesting point of view, <laughs> George. To... There is a resemblance. You, you, you got me thinking now, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> But I highly, uh, for instance, because because of this this um, highly colorized um, and highly almost epileptic feel to it, I would go definitely more to with the with with, with the with the psych with a predominant psychedelic uh, psychedelic feel to it. Um, then um, then 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 the pure pop one that. Um, or the the socialist message underneath that not just the pop culture since it was coming from from the east or central eastern europe uh it it is true well it it is true the even though again it's czechoslovakia which was uh a little bit after the uh, velvet uh, revolution also it's so. uh, yeah it's two years after but um well, reminiscences might might. Uh, uh, you know the colors, the 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 way the uh, you know the uh, ape stares and and I don't know. It, it is as if it it has a beard. You know, it's like <laughs> there is a a striking uh, resemblance is there in terms of the style. I mean, it's like no, no, no. I, I bring I, it I, to mind. Well, you know what? It may be not the style. Because I'm um, I'm thinking more and more uh, to it. Maybe, maybe it's not the style. The style is definitively psychedelic. I, I, you, you cannot argue with that. But now that you mention it, and and you mentioned uh, and you mentioned this um, the context, uh, I would rather go with with a composition. Mm -hmm. From a composition point of view, yes, you are totally right. From a composition point of view, yes, this is the leader, yeah, centered, yeah. centered central figure, uh, balanced by the central, uh, the central um, uh, layout of the um, uh, of the title, even more balanced by I don't know two Saturns for whatever reason I don't know, but <laughs> they're there, right? Even the, uh, even more balanced by the small texts and everything underneath. Right is chaos, but yeah. the leader, uh, yeah, the the first, yeah, the, first yes, yes, the upper yes, part is, is really balanced, like uh, if you want, uh, uh, like like the socialist uh, um, uh, images. Anyway, I mean it's it's quite interesting. Sorry to interrupt you, uh, and and also we had a um, a comment about Belmondo again from Richard. Uh, he, he says he heard that uh, after a while he got a little bit sick of the same style uh, design being used to promote his his films, his movies. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know whether that's true or false? Is it, or you haven't heard anything along those lines? Well, Jean Paul Belmondo back then was I don't know, was the guy. He he could do whatever he wanted, and uh, he was he was he was basically a pop icon, one of the first. Right, uh, really, really pop icons. I have no idea why. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not um, I'm not so huge into into uh, Belmondo's uh, Belmondo's history, um, but um, I I concur with uh, with uh, what you say. And yeah, uh, if you take the three posters underneath, right, the two uh, white ones and the red one, right. Um, they are actually they are boring. There is no other way of of um, of, um, of describing them. Mm -hmm. They have a definitive pattern to them, and uh, like uh, there is a particular style in which you would have to design these specific posters, and many were and many were designs like that designed like that, and well. These well, this is what style basically is about, right? Um, um, 
on trying to reproduce and reproduce um, um, this the, the same feel that a success a success story had years ago, right? We try to piggy bank on that all the time and try to reproduce it, be it by the composition, by colors, by whatever, by stylistic approach. Everything nowadays you, you can see uh, we are already already there. And but yes, to, to come back to your comment, it is it is boring and. This is a type of decadence uh, for uh, uh, for style, if you want. Uh, compared to the other two upstairs, right? Uh, the other up on the left, which are more dynamic, which are more uh, um, uh, vivid, different from um, uh, from one another, right? Uh, especially they're drawn and uh, much more artistry is uh, um, is, um, uh, is is being used. So uh, even as collectibles, and if, if for instance if you're a, a poster collector, I'm making a short uh, a short um, uh, parenthesis here. Um, if you're a poster collector and look for Belmondo movies. And original posters, I bet you that the three posters underneath are somewhere around the 200 euros range. And the two posters up there are around the 500 or 700 uh, euros yeah. posters range. And I let you decide why. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, very, very nice view and very, very, very good question. And very, uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy for that. Thank you, George, for patching it through. Uh, remark, yeah, remark from our audience, from Richard. Yeah, uh, just to you. also let you know, video, we are uh, we have about 10, 12 minutes uh, to go. Okay, I'm 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 nearly done. Um, now I'm I left the last slide of this uh, Planet of the Apes um, um, case study um, for the Romanian poster. Which is which I already know that is totally un, unknown to any scene, basically, not only to the graphic design scene or the graphic or European or international graphic design history. Um, but I'm pointing out the fact that um, these two posters are almost radically different than even the Eastern European posters that we just saw a slide before. And this is a highly interesting fact, and this leaves me with a lot of questions, even as a Romanian, right? Um, if you look closely to the poster on the left, okay, let's say the poster on the right-hand side uh, has a... a, a um, a certain arrangement plan to it. But boy, the poster on the left, it's beyond psychedelia. Uh, I cannot even even imagine how the <laughs> the artist began <laughs> drawing it. What what was the intent? Or to be honest, to ask what kind of drugs he used or he or she <laughs> used while designing it because nothing is in its place and it is fine but i actually this is actually a rarity and i'm actually the proud owner of this poster i photographed this one i never saw even in romanian even in romanian posters a poster looking as messed up as this one but Still, it is an official Planet of the Apes poster, and take it as such. So we Romanians are weird at, at best, right? In in poster making, and I'm closing I'm closing my bracket here because I could talk for hours only on this subject, and be critical as well. But uh, time is only uh, well, we have only nine more minutes, I guess, George. Right? About ten minutes, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, in short. The poster, right? Like uh, language itself cannot be unintentional, right? Of course, there are all kinds of posters, like there are all kinds of languages and 
even within those languages, there are good speakers as well. There are really lousy ones, right? But like language, the interesting fact is that not only the good posters uh, become representative or even iconic for a period of time or for that particular or for a particular subject. There are just there are some who just make it, you know, and this is a very interesting thing. And here we merge into the into into into, into the part of my presentation, which is basically only questions or actually want to raise questions for the for the questions and answer part uh, after the show. Um, and please let me give you this image which talks so much, which talks how to, which talks a lot on how our culture developed nowadays. This is a meme, right? This is a meme uh, that I don't know. We send one, uh, send to one in uh, uh, one another, and it's actually a scene from the Planet of the Apes. And actually, by any chance, I, I, or I don't know why or even how, this meme I just received three days ago when I was working on this presentation. So it had to come to get into my presentation. George knows that I changed a lot of my presentation because of that. Um, I don't know how many of you are, um, are aware that the memes nowadays are posters and they are language before being posters. And this language is building upon symbol, upon symbol, upon symbol, upon memory, upon symbol, upon memory, upon symbol, and giving us images like this one. Right? It's that particular woman that we saw with that we see in thousands of memes who cries her heart out to this imbecilic cat used here superimposed over the first scene when Charlton Heston lands to the to the to the planet of the apes this is communication we communicate like this right now and this as much as we want or not this is a poster the language used here in this very meme is a poster if we if we manage to simulate a perceptual let's say a, a perceptual dive into all the posters that have been designed throughout the past 100 years we can see a huge amount of voices and types of expression for the various mediums that were you that, that that have used the poster as as a medium yet each and every one of them is trying to visually articulate a valid idea to represent the most basic moods, feelings, and concepts for its intended audience. This is basically the thing that uh, makes a poster what it is to transmit a mood, a feeling, an information, something. It yells out. And I'm going now back, and I'm entering my last my last part. I'm going back to what I said earlier. In my opinion, the poster is the most valid cultural fingerprint for the community that is using it. The poster is the spirit of a place. The poster is communication. The poster is a smile. The poster is a yell. The poster is pleasure. The poster is pain. The poster is beautiful. The poster is horrific. The poster is intention. The poster is a mistake. The poster sells you. The poster kills you. The poster loves you. The poster salutes you. And the poster tickles you. 
The poster lifts you up. The poster takes you down. The poster ignores you. The poster informs you. The poster disinforms you. The poster is a punch in the face. The poster is comfort. The poster is crazy. The poster is fluid. The poster is left. The poster is right. The poster is a lesson. The poster is pain. The poster is pleasure. The poster is a movie. The poster is a mirror. The poster is language. And I finally must say that I firmly believe in the fact that the way we are using the poster as a means of, um, uh, of communication has direct and implicit repercussions on ourselves as human beings belonging to this place. If we're treating the poster with indifference, we manage to grow only negligent and sloppy towards ourselves. And this is why I think that it is highly important as, a, as poster designers in the first place to educate ourselves in being responsible and mindful of what we are doing. Because everything that we put on that poster arrives at everybody else. Thank you. Well, you definitely managed to evoke all those feelings uh, of video now while you were talking. We do have a couple of minutes uh, of uh, free time for questions. Let me first say uh, Richard, who uh, intervened before, is also has a question about these um, Central and Eastern European uh, movie posters. Uh, a, a question about a factual question, not interpretation. Did, did they have to be approved by their original uh, Western-based uh, distribution companies? I don't think so. So the design was left free to them, huh? Yes. Well, uh, um, I don't know about the Romanian design. <laughs> I don't know who, who would have ever approved that one, I guess. <laughs> anyway. But, but to be honest, some of the, some of the posters done, um, uh, done in, the, in Czechoslovakia mm -hmm. uh, uh, became being approved. Uh, they, um, uh, they, they, they were, they were approved. I'm, I'm not sure about Hungary, uh, Poland, and of course uh, Romania. But in Czechoslovakia, uh, from what I know, yes, they were. Okay. Um, uh, very, very quickly again. Um, a bit of information for you. Most of our viewers tonight have been from Brussels and Romania. We had a, a very uh, a couple of very happy uh, compatriots of yours uh, thanking you for uh, for uh, your intervention tonight and being very proud for having one of their own uh, <laughs> talking about the posters tonight. Um, Martina um, mentions. Um, um, uh, Matrina, sorry, not Martina, that early posters uh, were hard to, to read and they appear to be a little bit chaotic. So her question is, when did this hierarchy of information get introduced into poster design uh, and what dictated, uh, dictates change in styles? Uh, first of all, yeah, I think um, what, uh, what you're asking, and I hope that th that is the point, um, I, I think uh, it's it was all about clarity and readability. Uh, it's basically it's as simple as that. And uh, clarity and readability uh, began to be imposed upon uh, upon up, upon uh, uh, up, upon the poster making uh, technique really early on. Uh, now. Uh, and really early on, I mean here even the 1880s uh, or the 1890s. Um, now, um, like I told uh, before uh, about the Maurice columns in France. Um, oh, you started? Yes. Legibility was an issue back then. Not everybody could actually read. I'm sorry to say, but this was also a, also a thing that we... Uh, 
we uh, we must must think about when um, when putting these things into balance. So um, um, Toulouse Lautrec or Charret, Charret uh, used ninety percent uh, image, highly powerful image of women of dancers, etc., to attract the people uh, to that particular place. Because most of the, their clients, right, uh, didn't know how to read, right? So uh, they, the poster, till everybody or a big majority knew how to read, this wasn't uh, wasn't a big issue. So it it was like a big uh, wave, if you want, um, that uh, uh, happened from the Victorian times when many 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 more uh, people. Uh, knew how to read, then actually fall down and uh, uh, got um, got got back again. Um, well, to, okay. to keep it really short. Um, yeah, because, because we, can... we are already over time. Uh, I would like to Sorry. thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you. And I, I will you, also, George. before uh, closing, I would like to point out. Uh, I mean, the the so interesting way with which you. Uh, not only presented the whole subject, but especially with which you wrapped it all up, noting that uh, the poster is like the fingerprint uh, of, of our societies nowadays. The, po the poster is a punch in the face. The poster is crazy. It's fluid. It's left. It's right. Uh, it's, a, it's pain. It's pleasure. It's a movie. Thanks a lot for bringing all those emotions out to, to the people who were lucky enough to follow you tonight, um, myself included. I would also like to thank our people who work behind the scenes and made this possible. And that is Theodora, Nicholas, uh, William. Thank you very much for uh, making this happen. And finally, a big thanks to all those who joined us tonight uh, and participated in the debate, posed their questions and their remarks and their comments. Please don't forget to follow the House of European History uh, as we have all sorts of different events online and on site all the time. And of course, feel free to visit our exhibitions uh, anytime. Thanks a lot. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.